in the pharmacovigilance world today, the exchange of safety information has shifted from paper-based formats like SEOMs and MedWatch forms to the standardized electronic formats, considering large number of potential participants in the worldwide exchange of safety information. As for the new European regulations, the new Utah Vigilance Database has been released with implementation of updated GBP Module 6, Revision 2. There is now a simplification in the submission process with submission just being required to EMA and no separate submissions are required to the competent authorities of the member states by the marketing authorization holders. There is E2BR3 implementation for exchange of safety messages from EMA to marketing authorization holders like cases from EMA medical literature monitoring from the national competent authorities or the other marketing authorization holders or identified cases from EVDAS signal detection. After EMA, PMDA will also be mandating submissions in the R3 format by 2019. US FDA is also going ahead but will have capability to receive both old and the new formats. With the update in the GBP Module 6, which became effective as of 22nd November of the last year, there have been some significant updates with regards to the safety reporting requirements. To name a few, uh, there has been changes in the ICSR management based on Utah Vigilance Upgrade. There have been updates on the valid ICSR qualifying descriptors, uh, mainly patient and reporter identifiers, management of off-label use scenarios, and single point of submission to the EMA. So ICSRs will not be required, uh, considered as valid for submission unless information concerning qualification and country is available for at least one of the reporters. According to the final arrangements of reporting, all valid serious ICSRs need to be reported to EMA within 15 calendar days. This includes cases both from European and non-European territories. With regards to the non-serious cases, all the non-serious ICSRs originating from European Union need to be reported to EMA within 90 calendar days. The new reporting requirements, of course, pose a challenge for the marketing authorization holders to abide by the changing rules so that they meet the regulatory requirements. Therefore, appropriate training is required for the personnel managing the safety reporting requirements. We at Avenza Life Sciences have experienced PV experts who are well versed with the new regulations and help marketing authorization holders maintain the compliance. The new EU ICSR implementation guide points out some additional requirements that should be used when submitting to Euro Vigilance. E2B R3 presents with new additional fields, fields that have been removed or modified, and some data elements which have been moved from case level to the event level. These changes will not only affect the look of the safety systems, but it will generally change the way that an adverse event will be captured in the database. As for the E2B R3 format, Information regarding uh, seriousness, medical confirmation, and country of occurrence, they have been moved from case level to event level. Null flavor is another change in E2BR3. For specific reasons, information on mandatory data elements might be lacking for an ICSR, but it is still considered valid. Null flavor flags give a reason why this information is lacking, say for example, unknown or not provided. In case of need of a correction, or if a need arises to attach a document that was not available at time of original report, an amendment report could be sent at a later time in E2BR3, which was not earlier available in E2BR2. E2BR3 allows attachments such as literature articles or other documentation like autopsy reports, copies of laboratory results to be incorporate, incorporated in the ICSR XML file itself, which was not possible in E2BR2 format earlier. Some additional data fields have been introduced in e 2 r 3 like patient age group of fetus. Some special situations now need to be added in additional drug information field like overdose, misuse and medication error. The stakeholders have to change their safety databases in order to comply to E2BR3 specifications. At Avinsa, 
we help our clients to get ready for compliance to E2BR3 specifications. Changes are required in all SOPs and procedural documents as well as PSMF. Significant retraining of all the staff members involved in the process is required and Avinsa helps you achieve that.